Well, going back to John Kaufman, I met John um, on my visit to the seminary, and um, John was all business. It seemed like I was interrupting at the time, um, but gave me the information I needed, and that was basically it. And then I would meet him around the campus as he was doing his duties. But I found a very different side of John um, senior year. When I went to the house, his wife had asked me for something. I don't remember what. Um, but I went seeking her, and John answered the door. And I could tell that he was clearly delighted that a student had come to their home. Um, I never saw him smile so much uh, and have a twinkle in his eye. Um, and be so friendly. And, you know, but an alien has captured John and left this second. Um, but from there on, we had a, a very different relationship. And the few times I did get back to seminary, uh, John was one of the people I looked for. Uh, I knew about his special needs child and, um, and thought that they were a very special couple to do everything they did. Um, Dr. Lee was always personable, um, certainly an expert in his field, um, Lyman Lundin and, um, I guess he worked with Martin Heineken, um, uh, Boston McCurley. One of the ones I appreciated, uh, most was, uh, Dr. Albert in homiletics. Uh, besides the the studio that he used to film us and show us our sermons, um, he would often send us into Philadelphia with certain assignments to notice certain people. Um, I remember one was to take the subway to a place we hadn't been before and look everybody in the eye and see what kind of reaction we got. And then we'd have us come back and use those in sermons uh, and try and be a little less philosophical and esoteric and more concrete uh, human using human illustrations. Um, and that was quite excellent. But he would also have us over to his home. Uh, again, I don't remember where it was. I simply remember it was a carriage house. And would have us uh, for meals, um, but also just talk in a more relaxed environment about, about us and our calls and some of the best sermons we had heard that touched us in difficult times. Yeah. So I think... I don't know that um, I'm one of the better preachers, but certainly my preaching has um, been influenced dramatically by Dr. Albert. Um, Ted Tappert was an adventure. Um, he clearly uh, felt the importance of the Book of Concord and couldn't quite understand why I didn't have it memorized. Um, but it was uh, it was helpful to hear from him uh, the importance of that information and how it how it influences Lutherans to be Lutherans. What makes us uh, different? And I simply decades later, when I invited uh, Robert Schuler to come out to the aircraft carrier for an event and it went to pick him up. Uh, Bob said to me, uh, you know, you Lutherans have it right. I just can't sell it. Um, and we talked more about that. And uh, he was aware of the, the Book of Concord and certainly uh, from the Reformed Church, well aware of our theology and how 
Putin's generally live it out. But that was a quick flashback to uh, Ted Tappert and sitting through his class and uh, feeling good that other people besides uh, seminarians had uh, picked up on the import of that. I'm not thinking of Ruman, Jack Ruman. Um, we had some nicknames for some of the profs. Uh, Dr. Ruman was Machine Gun Jack. Uh, he spoke so quickly, and every pearl uh, was important. We couldn't possibly write fast enough uh, to be able to get that information down. But he expected us to remember it for exams. Um, so that was a challenge, particularly if you had had a late night. <laughs>